Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to welcome you to this edition of the GeoTop A seminar. I learned today that A goes for applications of geometry and topology. And our guest today is Jesus Rodriguez Vierato from CIMAT in Mexico. And he will tell us about an interesting application of topological analysis. Please, Jesus. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the organizer for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, this topic, topological analysis from latent semantic analysis. Um, well, first of all, I, let me explain to you a little bit about the motivation. So, uh, uh, this is about uh, natural language processing, so processing text documents. In particular, I want to process scientific papers, mostly because uh, the scientific papers is increasing every year, uh, and it is really hard to keep track of what, what is important and what is not important or what is useful for you or not. So uh, this is uh, an example of well, this is a graph that shows the submissions uh, of papers to archive the time and so as you can see there were only like a couple of thousand of documents uh, being submitted and nowadays we have like uh, over 60,000 eight times more documents research documents coming in so uh, so creating new tools to understand uh, uh, or find the, the right information on these uh, and a huge amount of documents is, is, is important. Uh, there are a lot of people working on this stuff and uh, uh, in processing documents. It's a, it is a lot of uh, a complete a area of research, which is natural language processing. Uh, but uh, from my point of view, I was trying to look for a solution or a, a try to give something or help uh, to the development of some of, of some of those tools by using topology. So like, is there something that topology can say or help to understand about the, the document structure of these papers? Uh, and, and when I was researching about it, um, one of the first doc, the first publications that I ca came across are is this one. Uh, this well, this is there are many others, but one uh, is I found it quite fascinating the way that they interpreted the holes that were created by homology. Uh, so this paper is called Concurrence of Concept in Mathematics is from Salnikov, Kassanev, Kassis, Labioté. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing, pronouncing that right. This came in 2018. And, and well, but the thing that, that, that I found fascinating about this work is the interpretation that they gave to the homology as the, as the holes found by the homology were holes of knowledge and i love that idea it's like is that the topology can be, be will be able to find holes in knowledge uh, well let me tell you a little bit of what they did uh so we can contrast of what we're going to do uh in, on this uh, on this work on, on what we're going to do differently so what they did was basically just took they create a simplicial complex using uh, as vertices as the math concepts that they took from Wikipedia. So they took a bunch of uh, math concepts from Wikipedia, like uh, the Pythagorean theorem, uh, the heat equation, and, and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, math concepts that you can find on Wikipedia. So some very basic, some others uh, very complicated, but at the end some uh, very standardized mathematical concepts uh, or theorems or um, and they put it in the vertices, and they just connect the, the vertices with a paper, with a line. If there is a paper that has those both concepts in it, if the paper mentioned those two concepts during the during the whole work, in in, in the content of the paper, you find those, those those two those two concepts, then you you create a connection. That's why it's called concurrency, because those two concepts can co occur in the same document and then you can create uh, you, they use not only edges by 
uh, two-dimensional simplices in case that three concepts appear in the same document and so on. And they create this big uh, simplicial complex. Uh, they use, they use 50,000 articles and they start analyzing them. And, and they start analyzing what kind of hole appears on it and, and everything. And it was a pretty, pretty amazing, uh, pretty interesting research. But uh, I got the feeling that we were just dealing with a pretty, very consolidated mathematical concepts here. So uh, one of the things that I want to uh, try to uh, find when I when I when I when you hear the word that is a holy knowledge, you probably you are looking for words that are not even in Wikipedia, right? Like uh, very new research that has a lot of concepts that they haven't been posted on Wikipedia, and 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 that's the kind of holes of knowledge that I would like to find uh, to detect. Uh, so. Uh, so the, the the question then is can we can we improve it can we just do something different how, how can we improve what they did um, and so this is the so one of the main the first ideas that I had uh, to try to improve it is that in, instead of well we decided to work with more documents well because we had access to them but uh, just just like a, a variation but uh, is not a big deal uh, and then instead of working with the doc with with mathematical concepts take, taken taken from wikipedia we decide to use uh the 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 documents instead as points in a point cloud this is a very common thing common technique in natural language processing so you just place each document in 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 in, in a high dimensional space as a point and you place all the documents that are very close related uh, with similar words and similar concepts uh, next to each other and, and documents with that that have different different information different words different concepts they, they, they you put them uh, apart like far, far away from each other and then that's the way that you create a point cloud a point cloud satisfying those conditions and from there, well, then we can start trying to detect holes by using persistent homology. Here is where the uh, uh, that's, that's the variation that I will uh, I wanted to try. Uh, so, uh, sorry, can uh -huh, I ask you? Yeah. How do you decide sorry. the dimensionality in which dimension to put these points? Ah, yeah. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I just decide uh, the. That te that te well, I'm going to explain that technique in a in right I mean in right a, in the next slide as a matter of fact in the next slide uh, yeah the dimensionality is, is something that I I didn't decide it is just people from natural language processing usually do when they work with these documents and they, and they use this technique that is called latent semantic analysis but that basically what latent semantic analysis does is just put, just create a point cloud with the documents with this with these uh, uh, with these properties about uh, that we want uh, that documents with similar content to be closer together uh, so this is the way that it works so we just extract from the documents uh, the text information in this case because there are too many documents I decided to just take the, the, the abstracts and titles and and then we just count the words the frequency of the words how many words appears in this document what words appears in this document and how many words appears on that document and how many times appears in it and we do the same for all the documents and for all the possible words that appear on the among all the documents well because there there, there are too many words appearing on, on, on this uh, this amount of words we have to restrict uh, this is done by hand as uh, like uh, I just want to remove words that appear too often, and we are going to remove words that just appeared in so few, in, in just a very small amount of documents, and we just kept those words. And then that that, that gives you like a, around. In this case, I I remember it, I got I got like two thousand two thousand words or something. Uh, those are, uh, that means that each document will become a two thousand dimensional vector. With only integer, um, uh, with with only uh, integer values on, 
on the on its entries. So this is going to be a really high dimensional space. Uh, but then, uh, then, then, because integers don't reflect exactly uh, the importance of the word, uh, uh, we uh, among all the documents, the the, the common the common uh, representation is called term frequency, uh, the TF IDF representation of that vector. That is nothing but taking the term frequency and divide it by the document frequency of that that term among all the all the documents. So that gives you a, a very large high dimensional vector anyway. But we, uh, but in, in this case, it's just the the number that you got represents uh, how how relevant that word is in the document. Uh, is comparing among all the documents, and then you use this technique that is called this a uh, linear algebra technique that is a singular value decomposition, uh, SVD. This is a technique used as dimensionality reduction, and they usually just take the, the first 100 components of the SVD. And that is the dimensional space that we usually work with, a 100 dimensional space. And this is a very common number used in, in natural language processing. And this, is, this, space, this space representation of the document is called the latent semantic analysis. Uh, I don't know if that answered your question, Alicia. Yes, yeah. thank you for asking the question before letting you speak. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, yeah, so that, that's, uh, no, no, you're, you're welcome. Um, so, so this is the latent semantic spa space, and here is just a few examples of how counting words and taking the TF, IDF a representation of the, uh, of, uh, the word is is a better is a better uh, approach to understand the, the the document structure. For example, words words like L uh, disappear from importance in the documents when we divide by the the, the document frequency uh, of the of the word in among all the documents. So that's that's how you got. This is how a, a vector looks like uh, in in the TF IDF representation. And later, when you just take the, the singular value decomposition, you reduce these this high dimensional vectors to just 100 dimensions. No longer are represented by words, but, but for uh, the entries of that vector represents uh, a linear combination of words. So that means that they are like, uh, we can call it phrases or sentences, but they are not actually sentences. They just just uh, percentile amount, percentage amounts of each words, uh, a linear combination of words, and but they, that's what the people from natural language processing likes to call the the semantic of that uh, uh, of is that that entry represents some semantic of the of the documents, a latent semantic. So. Well, that's that's latent semantic analysis, and so we. This is a very common technique and very useful, very useful, and very, is is this is still being used for many for many, for many software implementations. And so it probably is is well, and I decide to go with this one. There are many other options, ways to represent documents in a point cloud, uh, but well, but this one. Uh, turns out to be uh, uh, fast and simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, so now that we have our point cloud, now we are going to try to compute the persistent homology and try to understand what, what is going on. Uh, what, what kind of holes are we finding there? Um, so for for that we need first to re, I need first to remind you what a persistent homology is is in this example I have uh, a bunch of points I just choose 20 documents and projected to the two dimensional space and well once that you have your point cloud you start you know, creating you start ticking those points up uh, with uh, a certain amount so you 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 just Put a circle of radius r 
as a center on, on each of the points, and you just start increasing the the, ra the radius. And there are, and then some holes are going to appear after after a, after a time, uh, and then it's going to disappear later after. So this is this is the this the, the exact time when it appears and the exact time when it disappears is called the life. Uh, I don't know if you can see my, the mouse pointer. And there is a hole that appears here, and then it disappears later after. And, and there is another one that appears on the, uh, next to it on the right. And there is a big one that is going to appear on the, uh, on the on the left right here. Uh, so and so persistent homology is just going to tell you how many holes appear and for how long they live and, uh, and things like that. And this is an example of just the one-dimensional holes. There are one, two, three-dimensional holes. There are holes of many dimensions. And one, uh, like we are interested in holes, we are not going to take attention to uh, the zero-dimensional homology, which is just the number of connected components. This, this, is, uh, this is not going to tell you nothing about holes in knowledge is, is, is so we're not going to pay attention to the uh, it, zero dimension homology is a pretty useful tool as well but uh, but for the purpose of our this research it is we decide to ignore it uh, for now um well so one natural question is that, that are these h1 holes really holes of knowledge so this have how can we just say how can we be sure that these are or how can we just try to measure if, or do something or analyze if these are actually halls of knowledge? Uh, so one of one of the things that I try to do is just well try to work with a specific case. Uh, and and one of the things that I uh, first uh, we have to agree on something that I uh, that we can all agree on or, or is that. When you remove a paper, when you take away a paper, even if it is a small paper or uh, a very simple uh, um, mat around it, uh, even if you remove a when you remove a paper, you are creating a hole in, in the knowledge. Probably that's that's a very natural way of thinking. If there is a one paper missing there, so that means that there is a hole in knowledge. So this is natural, and so um, the the size of the hole. I don't know what we would mean, but probably it would mean that the importance of the paper or just going to mean that it is a very well-connected paper, so this is going to create a, a very small hole, or is, or is, if you have, if there is, if there is, is a very new area of research and you take away one paper, it's just going to create a big hole. I don't know what the, 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 I don't know what to think about the size of the hole, uh, but as a matter of fact, but, but there, there is a true fact that I want to believe is that if I remove a paper, I'm creating a hole. So, and I and, and I want to analyze those holes first, in order to later try to detect them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. But for for because I'm not, I am a mathematician and I know a lot of math. But it, it, when when you're talking about research paper, uh, it, you, uh, it's really hard to understand papers from other areas, so I decide to just take a look at the at the areas of, uh, of, of my main area of research, which is MathGT. Uh, this is the category in archive, but this category belong, uh, corresponds to geometric topology. This is the, the my main area of research, and there in in this in, in this category you can find uh, we we managed to get. Uh, almost 60,000 documents, and then and then we are going to start creating holes on this uh, space of documents by removing papers, and 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 analyzing what is happening with the holes, uh, how the holes of those uh, after removing the paper, how those holes looks like. Um, so we pick uh, uh, we will decide to work to work with uh, with. Not all the documents, but yes, a few of them. Probably the newest papers, because uh, if, if we want to detect holes in knowledge, probably those papers are coming in a moment where there was uh, a, an apparent hole or some or some hole being created there. Or, I don't know. Uh, 
uh, that the decision of using the newest papers is because it is uh, I'm looking forward to understand holes before the appearance of the paper. Uh, so take those 2,000 documents, almost 2,000 documents, and and then I and then the red dot here is the 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 paper one of those papers on on the point cloud and then we just take a look uh, a closer look uh, we zoom out around that paper and you, we just can see and we just took the 200 closest documents we think uh, that by looking at 200 documents it is enough to get, give you an idea uh, of what this paper is about and and also um, if we want to understand it, the whole, the whole is going to appear because if, if there are a lot of documents around it, and the holes are going to appear just in the, uh, we just uh, the holes are going to appear with connections with the closest, uh, closest documents. So we we just want to pay attention to that, and it's easier uh, for the computer to compute the precision homology and others and other stuff if we just look at the uh, at the closest documents. And, and well, in, in, in my experience, a, a document will probably just work with a, a couple of dozens of references. So that means that if, if we take 200 closest documents, we're going to uh, we're going to cover all couple of dozen documents plus many others more. So that probably give you a good idea of what that paper and the area of research of that paper is, is it belongs to. So we are going to work with the. We are going to try to compute the precision homology on that, and that is small neighborhood of the uh, of that paper. And here, and here is what happened with the homology. I, I, I'm plotting here the first homology and the second homology uh, of of one of one paper after one with the document. We'll have the homology with the document and the homology after we remove the document. And so, if, as you can see, there is not much difference between the two homologies, um, which means that the neighborhood that we are taking is big enough to not uh, notice any difference between the homologies. Even th you can even say that I'm just placing here the same uh, persistent diagram, but I can assure you that it's not the same persistent diagram. They are they are different. There is one point of difference between the, the point clouds that we are working with. Uh, so, in, in one way, so for the naked eye, it's really hard to see what's the difference between these two diagrams. So we have to use uh, a, another tool to decide what have changed or how much have changed from one one persistent diagram to the other. And so the natural way to go is using the bottleneck distance. Uh, if you don't know about the bottleneck distance, is is just you just take uh, one diagram and you just put the other on top of it, uh, and you just uh, create a mapping in such a way that you try to fit the two graph, the two persistent diagram, the best that they that, you, that they can fit, and there is going to be some loose points that you cannot uh, identify with the others. And so you just try to identify any way that you can, and 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 you just take the measure of the maximum distance that you have to move from one point to other, uh, to say that that is the distance between those those the, that matching that you just use. Gamma gamma here is the matching, so you just uh, is a matching of points from one diagram to the other, and you just take the maximum distance between all the matchings. And that is the, the that the distance of the matching, and then you take the infimum, the the infimum, the the minimum value or the infimus, the infimus now, no, the minimum value uh, from all the possible matchings, and that's the that's the best that you can do when matching the two, uh, the two persistent diagrams. And so that's that's very helpful for us because we have a lot of matchings going on, because uh, as you can see in our, in our previous graph. 
all all these points from the left are going to match with the points from the from, from the left of this side. All, almost all the red points are going to match with each other. So there are going to be only a few loose points, and that is the distance that we are getting here. So this is the bottleneck distance we got. Like H1 is pretty small, but this, this, you can see that the, the two diagrams are the same in H2. So uh, so we got a very small amount of uh, uh, of distance between the, the diagrams. So, and then, well, so then we went to, we went to the, and tried to see, it compute this distance for these two, 2,000 documents. And, and these are the papers that got the highest value on bottleneck distance. So that means that this paper, when these papers are removed and placed, uh, uh, when these papers are and placed back, the, the the persistent homology changed a lot. Uh, the persistent diagram. So, for, and, and I'm glad to see that we have really important researchers like the people that I know, like Kawauchi or Eagle and Friedman. And so we need to uh, we need more topologists to look at this list and tell me if this a very if these papers are really that important or what these papers, uh, what is this uh, H1 distance or this bottleneck distance is measuring about these papers. Uh, and this is a, but if you take a look at the, uh, just the, the second bottleneck distance, uh, you have the different list of papers, but you have other papers that are still there, like for example, Gabriel Sef, uh, uh, this one of not invariance in length spaces is still there. Like, uh, so, well, I'm I'm pretty glad that some very important names and good papers appear on this uh, on this list. So that means for me, it's kind of just give me the feeling that yeah, uh, H H1 and H2 are really sensitive to uh, to the holes of to holes in knowledge. Um, Jesus? Uh, but still, I'm pretty sad, yeah. Yeah? I have a question. Yes, tell me. Uh, uh, can you uh, predict uh, that behavior from the, from the reference graph? Uh, the reference graph? Uh, For example, each paper ah, yeah. has, uh, has, has a list it, of reference which will have other papers. So, yeah, yeah. very influential papers uh, should have, have a lot of reference. Seated a lot. It's like inverse. Yeah, that's a great. Uh, that's, inverse that's a very good graph. idea, yeah. Yeah, that's it a very good idea. I have seen uh, those graphs before and they yeah, actually can help you. They will be a great idea to compare the reference, yeah, with this. No, I haven't it's looked like, at it, but yeah. It's like the way that the Google algorithm works to to assign positions to the uh, searching results. If if uh, a result has a lot of citations, it will be more important. Mm, great, great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That will be a, a, then, then you a can good. use your, your approach to evaluate how much how how, uh, how much is that that importance is because the size of the hole that uh, disappear when you remove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that will yeah. That's a really good thing to do. Yeah. You're right. I have to I have to do the comparison. But I was just trying to look at the uh, at the, the, at the actual paper papers are create kind of if we want to get a measure of ranking papers is uh, in its importance. Probably we have to compare it with uh, the the citation. The number of citations and stuff like that, or the connectivity in the citation graph. Uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good thing to try. Uh, I, I think that the the citation the inverse citation graph 
should have a very huge intersection with the with the one skeleton of your simplicial complex because it's a graph no? you mm -hmm. can evaluate how much it seems uh, similar i don't know yeah well and so uh so yeah, it's kind of, we we can see that H1 and H2 are sensitive are very good. They are sensitive to the paper removal, and but for some papers they are really sensitive. For some others they aren't. But uh, and as as, as uh, uh, Randall uh, just put it, it is a good idea to compare it with other other measures. To see uh, what kind of things uh, is H1 and H2 measure, is measuring here. Well, and well, also what, one of the things that I was trying to do is to find holes if uh, context these kind of holes in the, in the whole structure in the, in the whole point cloud uh, of. But the, the the whole point cloud of math documents is is really hu is huge is uh, is massive, uh, four hundred thousand documents is is really hard to process, and uh, so with, I decide to just split it split it up in in sub categories from archive, and th these are the norm the regular the categories that archive already have, and. But unfortunately, these categories are way in balance. Uh, so we have categories with more, almost 60,000 documents and, and other categories with almost no contributions at all. Uh, the, I think this one here in the left is uh, I am part of that, I, I don't really remember. And this one here is well, this one is also something like history uh, research, and this one here is general mathematics. So this one is probably archive is not the kind of place that uh, uh, attract uh, this kind of publications on, uh, on it. Um, but yeah, so we have a lot of balance uh, balanced documents, and still we want to compute the number of holes of, for each of one and just and, and do a comparison across all the document uh, all the categories uh, because of some computational power uh, it's really hard to compute the precision homology when you have more than a 50,000 points or 50,000 documents and so we decide to use this idea from uh, wisely and Mallot uh, that they decide they, they say that if you Want to reduce your the you you need to data first and then and then compute the persistent homology. And one way to reduce it is using this uh, clustering algorithm that is called k-means. And, and this example here, I just took the circle from the left and and just compute five use the k-mean algorithm for five points, and I will get five points representing the whole the whole set of documents. And you you need to you need to choose k to run the, the algorithm, uh, so you need to choose the number of points that you're gonna the, you're gonna, the number of points that you're gonna reduce your your cloud to, and and so for in this case I instead of working with whenever I have more than fifty thousand documents I decide to use twelve thousand uh, k means, which is a lot a lot of k means. So that, that means that when whenever I have fifty thousand documents I will start pairing documents that are closer to each other. Or uh, or uh, at most three or four documents in, in in every cluster, and that for for uh, areas like uh, categories like like math may MP, you're gonna reduce it like a third of the size. Uh, so and this is the number of holes that appear on each category, just uh, from uh, and. So you can see there is not not much a difference, even even though that uh, there are categories with very few amount of papers, uh, they almost look the same, uh, which is uh, something really interesting to me. And but uh, if you want to see some difference, uh, you, something you, you can try is to cut out 
all the holes that just live and die pretty soon and just choose a, a very uh, a very specific parameter to remove all those and just take and just keep all the the holes that are below that thres above that threshold and and after filtering we got all this all this other uh distribution of holes and well in in, in here you can that now uh, general mathematics stand that stands out if holes a lot of holes probably because this area uh, is has pretty few papers and and they are very spread out and so that means that even if uh, you need to increase the, the the holes that appear live for for a longer period and and now uh, and this is and and then you have you have some other areas that don't have a hole a lot, uh, just have one hole like the statistics theory well it will be nice to see what ho that hole looks like and what is the information that is uh, uh, why is there only one big hole on, on this uh, area but i'm not specialized in the statistics and and, and so uh, i have postponed this uh, this part of the research but yeah uh, this is a very interesting work i'm still uh, have some some questions to answer. Um, uh, well, one of them is try to describe these words, the, the describe these uh, persistent cycles, and try to detect the words and concepts and papers, uh, a, a representation of words and papers that uh, in, englobe those holes. Uh, uh, another way is to find a way to normalize the results according to the number of documents. But I think uh, the, the number of documents is being presented and in, uh, in, in is affecting the results a lot. Uh, uh, and analyze the change of persistent homology to time. This is going to be a good idea uh, because this is something that has already been done, but not in this context with latent persistent homology uh, that you just start moving through time and and then you will see how some holes appear and disappear with time. And, and and that will give you an idea uh, how in what direction the the research is moving, what kind of holes are getting more importance than others. Well, that's, uh, that's a, a, another interesting uh, approach that I'm trying to take. These are some reference that uh, papers that that, that I, I that I recommend uh, that try to do something similar to what I just did. Uh, and I want to acknowledge uh, thanks to Adrian Pastor. Pastor Lopez Monroy, because he is the, the natural language processing uh, person, the, especially the researcher that is, uh, is helping me with uh, uh, the connection with uh, the, the area. And, and thanks to Jose Carlos Gomez Largañaga because uh, for all his support, supporting me, uh, he's been uh, helping me to keep going with this uh, research. Well, uh, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. I have one question. In the in the first one of the first slides that you show, there were there were the, the words, but the words there were not math words. Were just maybe theorem or proof. They were common words, like where did you use math words or just use those ones? Well, I use every word that appears on the uh, uh, every word, and I I try to set the parameters in order for m mad words to appear, uh, because if uh, with a very loose parameters, you start words. There are a lot of words that stand out, like. Uh, uh, Mm, there are not math related words, but it's more like, uh, or, or very, very generic words, uh, for example, analysis or graph. Uh, well, graph is a really important one, but it, um, but what I was getting uh, those parameters was uh, 
uh, words that are they were mathematical words, but uh, not very descriptive or, uh, or, or how you say uh, specialized words. I was looking for getting a specialized words, so like from the research area. Uh, and, well, in this case, as you can see at the end, we just got all the words, <laughs> all the words. And but uh, uh, when maybe uh, in this case, um, yeah, but there are words that are real. Uh, Really relevant, like graphs, uh, uh, algorithmic uh, connections, connecting. Uh, well, that's the kind of words words that I, I'm getting. And when you start restricting to small areas or more uh, small papers that are connected, you get better words in that case. Mm -hmm. Better words uh, because in this case, this is as just an example of. When you try to look at the whole massive amount of papers, it's really hard to uh, to pay attention to uh, highly specific words. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Jesus? Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Let me see if I see anything in the chat. There was a question here if whether you consider other clustering algorithms. Ah, uh, yeah, I I try to work with agglomerative clusterings and and other other clusterings instead of k-means. Uh, but uh, so, uh, the problem with agglomerative clustering is that it tends to eat up everything that is close to the uh, to the points. And if you just set your parameters too high, uh, there is a good chance that you, you will uh, a hole, you will eat up an entire hole. And, and that and I want to detect holes, so that's why. Uh, because it, it, there 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 are moments where agglomerated clustering can just cluster in all the all the all the papers in just a, a hole, even if they are. Further, further apart, the 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 the, the, the documents. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to use something that is just local. Mm -hmm. So we have any other questions? Seems that we don't. So we thank you very much again. Uh, okay, that there is something. Let me see. Did you try James Mason? Mason, I don't know. Ask. Did you try HDB scan? Yeah. HDB scan. Ah, uh, no, I did not. I think uh, okay. I went to several, but I don't remember that specific. That that one specific. Uh, and also, uh, how did you get the value of k? Uh, uh, the value of k. Um, well, I just I just said the value of k, the high the highest value that I could, in order for uh, the persistent homology being computable in a reasonable time. Mainly that was uh, because uh, the problem is that the the reason because I decide to uh, compute uh, uh, clusterings. Is because I, I wasn't able to compute the homology for such a large number of papers. Mm -hmm. 